Good morning. We welcome New Mexico State student athletes Shun Buchanan and Eli Chua to the dais. We'd remind you, uh, make a couple of requests that you raise your hand when you have a question, and we'll get the student af or the uh, microphone holders to you. And if you'd wait until the microphone holder gets there before you direct your question, that would be great. And if you can direct it to a specific student athlete, that would be very helpful also. So let's go ahead and open it up to questions for New Mexico State student athletes. Eli, uh, can you t tell me how uh, last year's experience will help you out this year in, at the NCAA tournament? Um, well, for me, you know, this is my third time being here, you know, so I got, I got a couple years of experience, but, you know, from last year, our team, uh, I feel like it, it, it gives us a little boost, you know, and uh, just watching film on these guys and um, from last year, just learning from last year on what, what we didn't do good, you know, it's just, it's just a learning experience, so I feel like it's, it'll help us in the long run. Can both of you guys talk about what you what you've seen from Auburn? What stands out to you since you since you've been watching a lot of film the last couple of days? Eli, let's start with you. Um, you know they're an SEC team. Obviously, you know they're they're strong. They're athletic. You know that's what we've seen so far. You know, so really they're just super athletic. You know, and they're strong. They're SEC team, obviously. So that's that's a lot. Of we, that's all we really seen right now. Shun, uh, I just say the athleticism and quickness, I guess, and the size of them. That's about it. And as players, like, do you guys, um, there's a lot of 12-5 upsets. It's always one of the, the trendy, you know, upset picks in the tournament. Like, do you guys look at that as, you know, do you, what do you guys think about that? Like, when you saw the 12-5, is that, is that like, here's a, you know, we're, we're going to get some attention here? Um, I mean, I don't think we look at it as a 12-5. I feel like we're, regardless of what seed we are, we're going to play. We're going to play our hardest, you know, regardless of what we play. I, I don't think we look at it as a 12-5 seed. You know, we just... We're, coming, we're in the NCAA tournament. You know, everybody's good in this tournament. We're just going to come playing hard. Yeah, like Eli said, everyone's good. So we just don't take no one for granted. And just come out and play hard because we know Coach Jan's going to put us in the best position to win. Uh, could you guys talk about the chemistry on this year's team and how, how you get along, please? Sean? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Everybody loves each other. We yeah. just always stay together, always hang with each other. When we have free time, which we barely have, but <laughs> we always together and just having a good time, always joking around. Yeah. Eli? Yeah, it's like, it, this, te this team chemistry is great, you know. It's, it, it's great all on and off the court, you know, so it's really good. More questions? Sean, uh, what's, uh, what's the practice uh, schedule been like this past week? Have you guys been able to have a regular routine of any sort? Yeah, we kind of had a regular routine after we got back from Vegas, went to the WAC tournament. We really didn't uh, dwell on the uh, WAC Vegas. We celebrated a little bit, but we got right, right into it, right into Auburn and just game plan and just practice hard because we don't have many guys that play a lot of minutes. So we we'd be tired, but we barely tired. So. We, Coach Jan just push us and we come do what he asks us to do every day and just work hard and just preparing to win this game. Anything else? All right, we'll let these student athletes go and we'll welcome Coach Jans in just a moment. Thank you.
All right, we welcome Coach Jans to the stage. We'll go ahead, go ahead and open it up to questions for Coach Jans. As a reminder, please uh, let us know when you have a question, and we'll direct a mic holder to you. Please wait until the mic holder gets there so you can ask your question and be heard. Questions? Hey, Coach. Uh, can you give me your thoughts on Auburn going into this ballgame? You know, they're a handful. You know, they're playing their best basketball of the season right now. They've won eight games in a row against SEC competition. Um, they're feeling great about one another. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, how proficient and how many, you know, threes they shoot a game. It's a 30-plus 30, 30 uh, game. I think they shot 40 in the final in the SEC tournament. And, um, but they're not a, a traditional three-point shooting team. They got – Great guards out front that can really bounce it um, and shoot it with range, but you know they got plenty of size and athletes, and that's something that we're not used to. We don't play against that type of athlete um, on a nightly basis. You know we do randomly in the fall with our schedule, but we don't do it night in and night out. And that's my biggest concern is I think it's going to be like walking out in the cold for the first time in the winter. Um, and just trying to adjust and get your body to adjust to that cold. And as a team, we're going to have to uh, adjust to their athleticism and their quickness uh, once the ball is jumped. But, um, you know, rebounding is going to be a big deal. Um, you know, we, we, people talk about our rebounding prowess, and we're really proud of that. But at the same time, you know, we're not doing it against this type of athlete. And so if we can, you know, win that battle, I, I think that, you know, puts, uh, gets us a step in the right direction. Coach Jans, can you talk about uh, Trevlin's just progression? It seems like he's uh, he's kind of become an X factor. He does, he can he can change the game defensively for a night, and then he can score another night. Can you talk about just is he an X factor for you? Yeah, it's a unique situation. I, I've never uh, had to ha someone be eligible at Christmas, and he didn't get here till late. So I never really didn't think he was going to be eligible all year long. Unfortunately, he was, and. So he didn't know the system. He didn't know the terminology. He was always with the scout team. I wasn't coaching him very much. We were just trying to get him um, acclimated to our system and our program. And then all of a sudden, he becomes eligible. And at that point, we're like, he could be our X factor because of the talent. You could see the talent, the size, the ability. But how long would it take for him to um, adjust to us and, and what we're trying to do? And if you watch his progression and you watch the games like you have, you could see the steady progression. Certainly, there were some ups and downs, especially early. But as the season progressed, um, you knew he was capable of being that X factor because he has the ability to score the ball, rebound the ball, and, and be a playmaker. You know, when he's got size at his position, it's something that we were lacking uh, on the wing until his arrival. So um, I'm really, really excited for him. Um, I mean, he's very, very confident every day. I mean, he thinks he's the best player on the court no matter where he's playing, who he's playing against, and hopefully that will help him, you know, playing against these type of teams. But he certainly uh, showed, uh, you know, everybody that was watching our game on Saturday what he's capable of, and um, hopefully that will just boost his confidence that he'll continue playing the way he is. Yeah, Coach, one, one of your players is having a little bit of a homecoming in JoJo Zamora, used to play up at Utah. What has he brought to your team this year as a fifth-year senior and kind of that veteran guy for you guys? You know, you could argue that JoJo single-handedly won a couple games for us this year. You know, he's a streaky scorer. Um, and when he gets going, there's, not, there's nothing you can do about it. He scores in bunches. Um, you know, we, we've had multiple games where, you know, he'll go eight for nine and a half, and, and the game will be over. Um, he's capable of that. Um, it, it, you know, obviously, as a coach, you want him to be a little more consistent, but it sure is nice bringing someone off the bench that you know can change a game with three or four shots, and he's capable of doing that. And I'm proud of him because he, he, I don't think he's ever uh, considered a defender. It's, it's been a foreign word to him um, before he arrived at our place. And um, he's gotten on the floor because he's, he's been a willing defender and he's better, a better rebounder. Um, so we're, we're hopeful that um, you know, he, he, in one of these games he can go on one of his uh, you know, special runs and uh, turn the tide, if you will. In regards to you know Auburn's athleticism, as you mentioned, how do you 
counter that? I mean, how do you, obviously you don't want your guys to be deer in headlights, I'm sure they won't be, but how do you X and O counter that? It's a good question. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, you know, we got to use our technique. You know, we got to um, check them out. Old school basketball, you know, if we just turn and look at the rim when the ball is shot, we're not going to win the jumping contest. We're not going to win the size contest. We have to rely on our, our habits uh, of checking out and um, our quickness. We're pretty quick to the ball um, and just being tough. Um, is if we try to just, you know, step in the center of the ring and, and just duke it out with them, we're going to have problems. And so um, we, we've got to try to control tempo as, as, as best we can and, and pick our spots. Um, and, and I think rebounding is going to be a big deal. I mean, we've got to be able to, um, you know, beat them to some loose balls, beat them uh, on some long rebounds. Because both teams shoot a lot of threes, there will be a lot of long rebounds. And, you know, the long rebounds don't necessarily – uh, you know, not necessarily an advantage for the taller players. It's, it's an advantage for the quicker players, the people that you know move first and and track the ball down. And um, so we're going to try to use our quickness and our tenacity to our advantage, um, and hopefully just rely on our training. Coach, you spent a good part of your career at Wichita State under Greg Marshall. What was that experience like, and what did you kind of take away from that? That's kind of helped you as a head coach at New Mexico State. Yeah, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for uh, Coach Marshall. I mean, he gave me a wonderful opportunity to, to be by his side for, for nine years. And we had a, some, some great teams and some heck of a runs. And it was a lot of fun to be a part of it. But um, basically, I mean, I felt like I was getting a PhD in basketball and, and probably most importantly, how to be a CEO of an organization. I mean, the way he ran his program, um, you know, he was on it every day. And he brought energy and, and ideas and thoughts. and. Um, you, you knew you knew what you were getting every day with him. He never took a day off. He was always ready to go at practice. And uh, I just learned a lot from observing him, how, how to run the program. And, you know, he's been doing this for over 20 years as a head coach and, you know, uh, arguably one of the best coaches in the country right now. And, and just to be by his side and to watch him work at his craft and, and to take all that knowledge with me and, and try to implement to our program, uh, it's just, like I said, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Chris, last year you had the focal points of Zach Lofton, Jamario Jones. This year you got 12, 13 guys you could throw on the floor that could have an impact at any time. How beneficial is that to have coming into a game like this? Yeah, hopefully it will be. Um, you know, last year I think our biggest problem in playing against teams like, like this, these Power Five teams, was their size made the court smaller. And we only had three guys on the floor at one time that could shoot the basketball. And so they sloughed off the other two guys, and, our, and it just it made the court even look smaller. We had a hard time getting any penetration. We had to rely on Zach to go uh, solo a lot and just create for himself. We throw it inside. There'll be you know two or three guys with their length and their hands swiping at the ball, and we weren't capable of spreading the floor quite like we are now. And I think that's our biggest change is uh, our spacing and having more guys on the floor that are capable scorers and shooters and teams can't focus on one or two guys and and hopefully you know that'll help us um, tomorrow and in, in, in being able to get better shots off against a team that's trying to turn you over coach uh, the second time as a head coach here uh, what did you learn the first time last year and that you're going to take into this experience first of all it's good to be back it's good to be back up here um, answering these questions and um, you know, what I learned as a head coach, I had been, you know, obviously an assistant and played in a number of NCAA tournament games, Final Four, et cetera. But when you're in that seat next door and you walk out there, um, the lights are brighter. The lights are brighter, and it feels different, um, even for me. I mean, I, I, I've talked to our team about it. Um, you know, winning the WAC championship was fun and was awesome, but it just felt different. It felt different. It wasn't uh, as, as uh, euphoric as it was last year being my first time and, and my first time at New Mexico State. And I think this, this go around, uh, we've got guys that are, have been with us and coached by us that were here last year. And we've talked about how different it is, how getting up on this podium and walking out for the open practice and all the media interviews that you have to do. And then when the ball is tipped, it just feels different. And I think because of, of me having been in, the, in that position now and our players being able to educate our new guys, I'm hopeful that that experience will help us this time around because I tell our guys all the time you can't teach experience. In order to get that, you have to go through something to get that experience. And now we have, and uh, hopefully it will help us tomorrow.